Next question is from Molly on Fire. I would love to hear how each of your careers in fitness began. Oh, man, we haven't told this story in a little while, have we? No. Yeah, I mean, Sal, I you mean on everybody else's podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think I, t I tell this uh, all the time. In fact, I just did a, an, an episode that I think goes live next Friday that I thought I probably shared this story the best, in my opinion, of all the interviews I've done. So when that comes out, I'll, I'll share it in my story. But you and I, I mean, Sal, Sal and I have, a, I think, a, a relatively similar story um, of – you know, I, I was, I actually was not uh, into, um, or I never thought I was going to be a personal trainer. Uh, when I was younger, I was driven uh, to make money. And I was interested in being an architect. I was interested in being a lawyer. Yeah, you're not going to pick fitness. Yeah, I did not. I <laughs> wanted to make money. That was my, that was Fitness my, is not the field. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was my main goal was to make money. And I didn't think that fitness would be that. I actually... Uh, and even when I bought my first national certification when I was uh, 18, I actually thought it would be – I'll never forget this. We were in a gym in Modesto and working out there, and my buddy and I were, were, were in junior college, and we're, we're talking about degrees and things like that, and we're, un, we're uncertain what we're going to declare as when we, when we eventually have to. And – we're talking about jobs, things that we're currently doing. And there's one of these personal trainers in there. And we, I think he actually said at first, he's like, you know, it'd be cool. Like side job while we're going through school is personal training, man. We love working out so much. And I'm like, yeah, that would be a cool. And that's actually what made me go home that night. And I bought a national cert and I bought it with the intention of, Hey, that would be a cool side job while I went to school. That was how that really mm -hmm. started. I just assumed they didn't make any money because I didn't know any trainers that were rich or had. And then and that for me, that's what all I was driven by. So then I, I have the national certification. I'm going through junior college. I'm on my second year. I notice I'm kind of dicking around. I'm in my hometown. I, I've, I've moved out of my own place when I was 17 years old. I'm partying. I have a keg on my fucking you know, balcony. So we're partying like every weekend. At that, thing, at that time, I thought it was cool to skip as many classes as I could, but yet still pass all the tests. You know, yeah. so just, that's kind that's, of that's a, that that's a move. That's a sign that you're an entrepreneur, by the way. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it is. I, I did that. I, I remember I was so proud. I passed with a C. Right. I showed up like four times. Right. Yeah. That, and so, and, I, and I'm, I've always prided myself on being a pretty self-aware person. And so I realize this about myself. I'm, you know, hanging out with my, my buddies. We're partying on the weekends. We're skipping class. You know, I'm chipping away at nine units a semester. And I, and I find myself, I'm 20 years old and I'm like, I'm not going to get stuck in this town. Uh, I don't, I, I, I want more for myself. I can't, I can't fuck around with this school thing anymore. I need to get this done. And I had a grandmother who lived in San Jose and my grandmother, uh, had a two bedroom, uh, apartment that she, she owned that I knew that I could go uh, live in one of the rooms and I could go to school. Now, what I also had found out this around the same time was that San Jose state was known for kinesiology. So I thought, oh, this is cool. I'll transfer over. I'll finish my AA at De Anza, And then I'll transfer to San Jose. And just since I'm into this working out thing and I'm already interested in being kind of a personal trainer, maybe I'll go down this kinesiology to, to direction and see where maybe the maybe I'll be a physical therapist. Now I'm thinking like I'm going to be a physical therapist like because I know that's more money than a personal trainer. So that's kind of where my head is at. So I moved to San Jose the very first week that I'm there. I walk across the street at, and there's a 24 hour fitness and I go to get a membership there. When I'm filling out the profile of the membership that asks how you heard about 24 hour fitness. Well, I had never heard of 24 hour fitness until I bought that national certification because it said that 24 hour fitness recognized it. Mm -hmm. So that was the first time I even heard of what 24 hour fitness was. So I put it on there. Oh, my IFPA national certification. Instantly that got the attention of the man general manager. He went and got the fitness manager. Fitness manager came over, gave me this whole spiel. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't have my degree. I don't have this. I haven't passed the test yet. I just bought it. They asked how I found about it. And he's like, no, 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 it's okay. We, we have 24 hour fitness university and you can take this test and all this stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm not looking for a job. I'm actually come. I moved to San Jose to go full-time school and they go, well, you could even work part-time. And so, and you get a free membership. So I'm like, okay. I passed their little test and I'm like, okay, I'll go part-time personal training. This is cool. This I just landed this job that I was already interested in doing as a side hustle while I was going to college. And I started and I had about three months or two, two or three months 
before the next semester was starting in De Anza and because I couldn't get enrolled in the, I, it was too late for the current one that was happening. So I had like a three month run rate before I was going to register for the next, the next semester. And I start this job and I fucking fall in love with it. I mean, every aspect of it. Uh, I, I, I loved being there. I loved working with people. I loved learning about the body and nutrition and, and all the knowledge that I was starting to consume uh, for myself selfishly. And then what I was teaching and giving people, it was just a fucking blast. And then, you know, you go from, I was a kid who started at $4.50 $4 an hour, worked his way up to $7 an hour to all of a sudden I'm making $70,000 a year as a personal trainer. It was like, holy shit. And every check that I made every two weeks was significantly bigger than the last one. And now, and I've got my, my boss at the time is in my ear and he's like, you were meant for this. You got to do this. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm here. I got to finish school. And I'm thinking, I'm like, fuck, I told all my family that I was going to go to school and this is what I was going to do. Like everybody's going to be pissed. My grandma bought me a computer and desk just for, I can do all my fucking homework. Like, so I'm stressing out about telling me that. And I'm going, I'm 20 years old right now. If I listen to this this guy who's telling me that I'm made for this and I can make all this money, if I listen to him and I give everything I got for one year and and then assess at the end of the year, is it what everybody says it's going to be? Um, I'm only 21. I still got almost my AA. It's not like I'm really behind my peers yet. Okay, I, I think I, I think I'll try this. And I pissed everybody off. You know, my grandma was disappointed. My uncles and aunts were disappointed. My parents were disappointed. But I knew. Um, that I was, I was still not not going to go to school. I was going to give this thing everything I got for one year to see if it could take me as far as what people are saying the potential it could take me. And man, in a year's time, mm -hmm. I mean, the rest is fucking history. I, I broke records. I I made as a twenty year old kid. I made seventy something thousand dollars my very first year. By the next year after that, I bought my house. I was now a six figure employee. I was in management. And it was real easy. And then they, and the real selling point for me, what, when, as I was falling in love with this career, where they were telling me that if you go get your four-year degree out of in kinesiology and you get a national certification, we pay you the same. And that was like the kind of the, the final thing for me was like, oh, you mean I could work, make all this money, continue to pursue my career, also educate myself on my own time at nighttime and on weekend courses and you will pay me the same that if I went through and dedicated four years of college and spend potentially, you know, 60 mm -hmm. to $100,000, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to do it this way. Yeah. So that's kind of how uh, I got started in fitness and the rest is kind of history. So it's a, there's definitely some similar aspects to mine. Um, the, the difference is how it started. I, I started working out uh, at 14 years old and immediately fell in love with the weights. Immediately loved it. Absolutely loved it. I love the fact that I could – work my body, I could train myself, I could learn, and then I could see changes in myself and improvements in myself. And I mean, I would come home from school, you know, as a kid, 15 years old, 16 years old, and I would spend two hours in the backyard working out. Um, I, at the, at, when I was 15, I got a job washing dishes at a, at a local pizzeria and I'd save my money and I'd go to the, to the, the supplement store and I'd buy protein powders and you know, I bought creatine when that first came out and I was studying these things. I bought chemistry books to study the chemicals in supplements so I could figure out which supplements were the right, right combinations. And I bought every single bodybuilding magazine and fitness. Bag. I absolutely loved it. In fact, I have old yearbooks and you can read what people write and all of them make a comment about something they're having to do with working out because I was so obsessed with it. So I knew that I was going to get into a field that was related to, to fitness. I just didn't know, I didn't think of the gym because I thought that there was no career in gyms. I thought that the careers revolving around fitness revolved around things like physical therapy. So same thing. I thought, okay, I'm going to go to school for physical therapy. Um, graduate high we school. We all have that in common. Yeah, exactly. By the way. <laughs> graduate what high were school. Because you know why? We're all money motivated. Yeah. And yeah. Have, but yeah, I wanted to be But there. I want fitness. <laughs> you can hear that from me too. Yeah. So I, I thought to myself like, cool, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to school for physical therapy. But in the meantime, I'm going to go become a personal trainer. Um, and I used to work out at the 24 Fitness on Hillsdale. I had a membership there since I was uh, 16 years old. My dad you know, would drive me. And then when I had my license, I drove myself. And I went up to the front desk and I asked them, hey, how do I apply to become a personal trainer? And they said, well, you have to be 18. At the time, I think I was 16 and a half or 17. 
So I waited. I'm like, okay, I got to be 18 years old. And I waited until like literally my fucking birthday. And I was like, I'm 18. I'm going to go apply. So it was probably, I don't know, a month or two after I turned 18. I walk in. And you got to keep this, keep in mind, I was a very, I'm a very different person than I was as a kid. But there's some things that were very similar. And I was just a very assertive 18-year-old. I wasn't your typical teenage kid. So I walked up to the front desk and I said, I'd like to speak to your manager. So <laughs> <laughs> manager doesn't wa- surprise me at all. Manager walks out. His name is uh, uh, Sean Winters. He was my he was the fitness manager at the time. He walks around the corner and I shake my hand and I'm like, I want to be a personal trainer here. And he's like, Oh, okay. I talked to him for five minute, five minutes and he's like, You're hired. <laughs> I think it was my it was because he saw my personality i was very oh, much man like, if i remember being a fitness manager if you got a kid that was 18 year olds i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be a trainer yeah so that was me so he's like you're hired so i'm like cool so he hires me um i become a personal trainer the the first day i start he has this other trainer shadow me now remember i knew nothing about the business of fitness i didn't know how i got paid i don't know what that looked like um, I remember when he hired me, I asked him how much you make. And he says, Oh, you can make up to 30 bucks an hour. So I thought that's what I got 30 bucks an hour. So I came in the next day and I'm fucking like, yeah, I'm making this great job to have while I go to, you know, while, while I go sign up for, for some classes or whatever. And I'm, and he had me, he had this other trainer kind of have me follow this other trainer along who was the top trainer in the club. Now, back in those days, 24 hour fitness had just become 24 hour, uh, sorry they had just become 24 hour fitness they were 24 hour nautilus before they had merged or took over another large fitness chain it was uh, Ray Wilson's family fitness and they changed their name to 24 hour fitness and at this time you know, you're talking 1997 personal training was not a revenue source it wasn't a big revenue it was like a it was something they were kind of trying to see if it would work but all the revenue came from memberships so here I am. I'm in this club, Hillsdale, which, you know, Club 504, if you're listening right now. That club now, or definitely later on, was producing tremendous amounts of revenue from personal training. But at the time, the whole club's goal, I think, was $13,000 for the whole month. Um, and the trainer that I was shadowing, he was like the top guy. And he was doing like $2,000 or $2,500. And I remember because my, my fitness manager was like, I want you to follow. I'm not going to say his name because I'll embarrass him because he sucked. I'm going to have you follow so-and-so around. He's our top trainer. And I'm like, oh, what makes you the top trainer? He's like, well, you know, I'm the top sales guy. I'm like, really? What do you sell? He's like, well, last month I did $3,000, and this month I'm already at $2,000. I had no concept. So I was like, wow, okay, whatever. So then he's showing me he's, he's showing me around, and he's taking people through orientations. And orientations are when people buy a membership, they get a free orientation to the gym. And your job as a trainer is to show them how to use like five or six pieces of equipment show them what they do, and then they're off on their own. Or they hire you as a personal trainer. So I follow him around, and he's taking Mrs. Johnson or whoever through, and he's like, here's a bicep curl, here's a chest press or whatever, and does his thing. And then at the end, he asks him a few questions about personal training, and the lady leaves. So I asked this guy, I'm like, wow, you fucking, we make 30 bucks an hour just for that? And he's like, no. He's like, we're making minimum wage. I'm like, excuse me? And I said, what do you mean we're making minimum wage? He's like, they have to hire you first. Then you make a percentage of of the session. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, well, how much do we charge for personal training? Like, what's the deal? And he's like, oh, here. And he pulls out this sheet and it has all the prices of personal training and it ranged from like 40 to $60 an hour or something like that. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. Okay. So he says, hey, look, do you want to take the next guy, the next person through the orientation? I'm like, sure. He's like, do you feel confident? I'm like, yeah. He leaves. This fucker leaves. <laughs> <laughs> first day. So yeah. First day. He took, he went through one orientation and then he leaves. So I'm like, okay. Person walks in. This lady walks in. I'll never forget her. <laughs> she comes in. Hey, how you doing? My name is Sal. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm your trainer for today. I'm gonna show you around. Come over here and sit at the desk with me. Fifteen minutes later, she bought ten sessions of personal training. Because <laughs> I'm like, you need to hire me. I'm gonna show. And literally, I remember what I told him. Like, look, I'm gonna show you around and use equipment, but you're not gonna know how to do a workout. Like, what are your goals? Now, keep in mind, I had no training. Nobody taught me how to do any of this stuff. So I show her the form. And I say, well, which one do you want? She's like, I think I'll start with 10 sessions. I'm like, perfect. Hold on one second. I walk all the way to the general manager's office. Darcy was my general manager. Knock on the door. She opens the door. I think, I don't even think she met me yet, right? She's like, huh? And I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm a trainer here. I'm like, you're the manager? Yeah, yeah. I said, I have a lady who wants to buy 10 sessions. She's like, what? Really? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay. So she's like, bring her in my office. So I bring her in. She signs her up. The lady leaves. 
So I think she assumed that this person, this lady walked up to me and asked me, hey, can I buy 10 sessions of training? Because she said nothing else. So now I have three more appointments that day. Next appointment walks in. It's a man. He walks in. I take him to the desk. I go back, Darcy's office, knock on the door. Hey, someone else wants to buy 10 sessions. (laughs) She's like, wait, are people walking up to you and asking you if they can buy a personal (laughs) training? I'm like, no, these are orientations. (laughs) And And she goes, you're not certified yet. I said, I know. I told them that. I told them that I'd be certified in about a month, and they said that they'd wait. So I schedule them out a a month out. She's like, okay, take the guy back, (laughs) sign him up. He walks out. Next guy that walks in, it's a kid. So this time it's a young kid. He's like 16 years old. I still remember. I remember this kid because I ended up, he ended up becoming a personal trainer later on. So he comes in. I take him in the back. He walks out the gym. So now he walks out, and I'm standing at the front at the front desk. The general manager walks out, and she goes, "What did you have another? I thought you said you had another orientation." I'm like, "Oh yeah." I said, "He went to go get his mom because he's going to buy 10 sessions of training." And she goes, "Oh, Sal." She goes, "I got to tell you something." She goes, "When people say they're going to you know leave and come back, yeah, two percent return. Yeah, they don't come." Right as she's saying that, he walks in with his mom. Oh, here, oh, here's my manager. She can sign you up. So I sold three packages my very first day of personal training, and within two days, I blew away the the first guy. And my first month, remember, the goal of the club was thirteen thousand dollars. My first month, I think I sold like seven or eight thousand dollars of personal training, which is insane. Which doesn't it, it doesn't make any sense. Like nobody knows what's going on. So now the general manager takes me in the office. This is after like a week. And she sits me down. She's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you're my favorite person. What are you doing? I want to know what you're doing. I want to know whatever. So this time, during this time, I start going to school. I'm going to school. Fucking hate it. Can't stand it. Absolutely. For anybody who knows me, you can, can you just try to imagine me sitting in a chair listening to a teacher you know, writing up on the, on the dry erase board or whatever. It's very difficult for me. So I'd sit there and all I think about is like I can't wait till this class is over so I could go yeah. go to work go to work like this is <laughs> Draw fucking terrible. Like me. Yeah, four months later, they offer me the fitness manager position. I still had no idea what I was doing at all. I remember the this is when Twenty Four Fitness had Apex, uh, which was uh, owned by Neil Spruce. This guy's a legend in the fitness space, and I remember uh, one of the representatives came down to the club because I was becoming a fitness manager, and they're like, "Hey." We heard about you. You're this new kid. You know, you're going to be a fitness manager. Your Apex sales, you're crushing everybody. Um, we'd love you to come teach uh, our other trainers how to sell Apex and how to talk about Apex. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And I said, but I need you to like, help teach me what Apex is. <laughs> they were like, what? <laughs> they go, what? I said, I don't know what it is. All I know is it's nutrition. And so I sell it because everybody needs nutrition. So they said, oh, we'll send you the class to go learn. We've bottled and, nutrition. Yeah, we'll send it. But anyway, I did that for a little while, became a general manager um, when I was 19, um, and just you were fucking one, loved you it. You were one of the, one of or the youngest general, general manager ever, because yeah, I know yeah. I was one of the youngest fitness managers ever. Yeah, I, I was 19, just about to turn 20 when I became a general manager. Um, so I was the youngest at that point that I heard of. Uh, uh, in the company. I just fucking loved it. I love fitness. I love the gym. You know, I was making a shit ton of money. I had no idea, I had no concept of what a lot of money was. I, I remember I'd take my checks and I'd deposit them and just leave them there and go back to work. I had no idea what was a lot of money. Uh, I, I, I was going to school to be a physical therapist and what convinced me to not go anymore was my hatred of school. Mm. Couldn't stand that. It yes. sucked. I had to take math classes to get my general, my AA or whatever. And I hated it. I think I showed up to one class and I was like, fuck this. I'm not doing homework. <laughs> Couldn't stand it. And then I, the other thing that convinced me was I had a, there was a member that was a physical therapist that told me how much she made. And I remember thinking, I'm making more than you. I'm not going to school anymore. This is all I'm going to do. And that was it. The rest was history. And, uh, and that's it. And then I, then I bought my own gym, uh, my own gym at 21. And uh, at 24, I had started my wellness studio. And that, that was it. The rest is history. Yeah, I could totally empathize with you and your disdain for school. Like that's where it all began for me. I was at San Jose State and was there for two years and was just sloughing off and doing anything I could to just barely make it by, show up. And I was just really just interested on trying out for the football team, making the football team, working out, like being physical. Uh, and meanwhile, like that was my entire focus. And and I found like. I had, I had like an opportunity to then go into the spring ball team. I had tried out and I had been like working my ass off to try and like make this team. And, uh, and then they, they cut it out from under me. They're like, you know what? We don't have a spot for you. And so I'm like, just in like, where, what the hell am I going to do with my life now? Like my girlfriend's at Cal Poly, you know, like I, I would 
find myself back and forth, like driving down there and that like half my life was there. I was like, San Jose State's weird because it's kind of like a commuter school. So like a lot of people there, they don't really hang out, you know? So I would like take a bus there and I would just like spend all this time by myself. And I'm a pretty social person, you know, as much as people think I'm an introvert, I, I definitely like to hang out with people and like uh, be social. And so that was like wearing on me. And uh, I guess this guy had uh, shared a flight with my dad and was flying back from the Midwest. And my dad was out there for business and he was just talking to the guy. And the guy turns out to be a, a coach for this small school in Chicago. And he was like, you know what, my son, he was amazing. Like I, I had all these like accolades from when I was in high school, you know, that guy that has all the, you know, MVPs and, and, you know, won championships and all that shit. Uncle, Uncle Rico. Yeah, the Uncle Rico <laughs> stuff, right? I could throw a football really far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I had that to my name, you know, people in my area knew who I was. Uh, and I wasn't going to see any playing time anymore. I just kind of gave up on the idea of football. And then my dad was like, Hey, I met this guy on the plane. He's really interested in like you. And like, he's like, I already sent him all your old footage and highlights. I'm like, what? Like, really? Okay. Weird. And then I just like, uh, started to communicate with him and had a phone call. He really liked me. He's like, I didn't hey. know this is how this played out. I had no idea about this. I didn't know your dad was the one who initially met the guy on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. He met, he met, uh, uh coach uh, Vanderkoy. He was a uh, really, really good guy. He, uh, he just he saw something in me and was like i want you know like wow. if, if you can if we can get you back to that type of playing it'd been two years for me outside of, of high school of playing actual football i mean i was training to try and get on d1 level um and i just was just on the brink of that and they just they, they didn't want to take a chance on me and so i was just like really deflated i was i was actually working at a, a junior college in san jose at san jose city college and i was working with their track team just to try my my weakness was speed and so my 40 time was shit. And uh, that was where I was really like working my ass off to get faster just just because all they care about was like these combine numbers. Yeah. And so that was my, my game speed, everything else, my athleticism, you know, like all the coaches recognized that and they, they saw how much of a beast I was in the weight room. And so they were like, yeah, we'll give you a chance, you know, and they kept giving me all these tryouts. And I had a grueling tryouts. When you're the guy that's like trying to get in on the team, like they fuck with you. <coughs> like they used to put me in like little scrimmages and things. This is before I was even on the team. And they would just like almost like bull in the ring kind of stuff and just smash you and just like, you know, work you into the ground in the see workouts. What, see what you could take. See huh? what you could take. I had to do a, a timed line. So liners, you'd go 25 yards back, you'd go 50 yards back, 75 yards back, 100 yards back, timed. If you didn't make that, you had to show up the next day at 5 a.m. and repeat it until you passed this time. It, oh. it took me two weeks uh, to pass that time. Oh, and so anyways, I was like throwing up. I was like, oh my God, I was like, just like adamant that I was going to make it though. Like, that was my entire goal. And I was just crushed that I didn't make it. And so anyway, so this was like a, a, a new opportunity for me. And, uh, I was trying to explain this to my girlfriend. She was obviously like not excited about the idea because I was going to be all the way on the other side of the country, you know, in Chicago. And then I was like, you know what? I've done everything for everybody else, you know, screw that. I'm just going to go. And so, and my, my parents were just super excited with this. I don't think they liked my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, like, let's get them to go. And so, uh, I went out to, to the Midwest and I, I, I had no friends out there and I was just like, you know, totally like, did I make the wrong decision? Is this crazy? And turns out like, I mean, that was, that was what I needed. I needed to find myself. Like this was all for me. I was really like all about fitness forever. I always loved being physical. I loved the training process, loved the off season, loved getting better. Uh, but that was always in the back burner. This is like, you know, like I want to either be, you know, in the NFL or I want to be a rock star. Those was, that was like my goals, like <laughs> very realistic, you yeah. know, very not lofty at all. Not, not lofty. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like stuff you still think about as a little kid. Like I had that like goal in mind. And uh, quickly realized that the, at the college level, like I could do well and I could handle, uh, you, you know, I could like step up to the plate, but I was never going to be like shining like I was at the high school level. So I just was just like, you know what, what am I doing? Like I'm grinding my ass off and like beating myself up to try and become something I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, like it, I'm not going to take steroids you know, like that was like thrown at me a bunch through the process. And I was just like, I, I just couldn't do it. I just wasn't like, and I was like, this is as strong and fast as I can be. Like this is it. And so I started to, to play music <laughs> and I thought that, <laughs> okay, I'm really into music. I'm going to play in this band. And I had a couple guys that were on the team that were just like, 
like me, like they just loved, you know, goofing off, playing music. I, I, we started a band with this guy I was rooming with. He was the drummer. Uh, we recruited somebody from another school. We're like touring around Chicago playing music. And I'm, I'm the guy that's setting up all the scheduling of all the dates, the appearances, like all this kind of stuff. Like I was like really gung ho. I'm like, we're going to, we're going to get signed, dude. You know, like we're going to make it. <laughs> and then like, it was after I graduated from college. I stayed there for an extra year to try and really be like, am I just like, like I, I still had some rational, realistic, like, look, this is a totally a dream, a pipe dream. Like let's, let's have some realism and I need a real job, you know? <laughs> and so I started interning with this, uh, with this place in Chicago that was like, it, it was like our dream setup. So there was, there's physical therapists there. There was massage therapists there. There was, you know, an ortho there. There was like all these like super like well-established professionals um, that uh, like, like, su- like wealthy people would come in and they have a gym membership, but they could have like access to all, you know, these physicians and uh, you know, some pro athletes would actually go through there and stuff. And I totally took it for granted. I was just like, you know, eh, whatever. Like I had had a good time, you know, just training people. And then I started going back to campus and training people just as sort of like a side gig. But meanwhile, I was like bartending and doing all that and then trying to become a, you know, a rock star. And, and so, uh, you know, it all kind of came to a, to a head and I made my way back to, to California cause I just missed home. I was very homesick. And, uh, and that's where I was like, I'll do anything at this point. Like I need to like, do I have to go back to construction? You know, maybe I'll go back to construction and I'll just do that for a living. And I, I drove past the 24 hour fitness and I just saw something in the window. They were looking for, for trainers. They're looking for help. And this is in Santa Cruz. And, uh, I was like, wow, that's interesting. I never even thought like that would be like a career that I could do. And I was like, maybe I'll try this out. And I was there for maybe, I don't know if it was a week and I was going through orientation and they, they saw that I had a degree. So that helped. Um, and they were like, you know, we'll put you on the floor, try you out and all this. But I guess at the time they just didn't have that much business. And they're like, you know what? We have another opportunity actually, like over in San Jose, I think, you know, it'd be a better fit if you're willing to drive and commute. I'm like, you know, I'm willing to do whatever. Like, I just, I want to, I just want to work and make money and, and be, you know, self-sufficient. And so I just decided to do that. And that's where I, you know, I, I connected with Adam and we went to, um, Hillsdale and then, uh, went to that, like that funny little course with a couple of the guys that were new hires at the time, Nick. And, um, I like subtly, like I was super, super competitive. Like I didn't want it to be obvious, you know, (laughs) I knew I didn't have the ultimate, Hey, Hey, look at me, everybody charisma. Like that's just not me, (laughs) but I wanted to crush you. I wanted to crush everybody. And like, I, I was picking everybody apart. Who's the best trainer? What do they do? Like, well, how do they talk to, to their clients? Like what's, what's, why are they carrying clipboards? What is this all about? Like why? Why can't I do this with the client? Like, so I was like breaking it all down and I, I was writing it all every night. I was writing it down every single night, I was writing it down. I'd come in with a plan, you know, and I just, that, that was like my safety net. It was like, <laughs> I had a plan every single day for every one of my clients. Like, and so I just, I just really was like methodical in the beginning as much as I could. And then like later, like I realized, oh wow, like I know what to do. I know what to do. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. And then I started to really flourish and uh, be comfortable. When I was comfortable, I started attracting more people. And then I started like building this really big base of clients. Then I started breaking records in the company, um, you know, and then obviously applying a lot of the techniques, sales techniques. I didn't have that before. Like it was great to learn all that stuff. Uh, and just, it was really just a confidence thing for me. It takes me a while to really feel like, uh, like I put myself all the way out there like oh i'm so awesome like it takes me a while to say i'm awesome and once i got to that place it was like it all kind of was like oh this was the best thing i could have done for myself and i loved it so awesome and now we're here yep yeah